Hoagie. Hoagie. Yeah. Okay, okay. Number four is Wallace? Wallaby. Wallaby. Yeah, Wallaby. Wallaby, Wallaby Beetles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the number five? Ooh, I never remember her Abigail. name. Abigail. Abigail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, no, no, Loki, Loki, I love them all, but I feel the MVP of the Kids Next Door was number five, man. Mm -hmm. She was like number one's right hand man. She was like always like, they were like best friends. Number five and number one. Oh, I just love, I love their character dynamic, but speaking of character dynamics, we'll see how Kron plays along with Mario here, because this is a different character dynamic altogether. Yep. We'll have to see how this goes. I mean, this is one of those scenarios, Mario, you know, as we know, very similar to Smash 4 Incarnation, going to suffer the same problems, you know, that range, which we're seeing right now. Those limbs are not quite working against those falling up airs, and it looks like the nuke is making great progress here. Got him at the ledge, trapping him, but Mario can get that reversal. Very possible. If he gets him into an up situation, just one flood, you're dead. Exactly right. It's understanding, it's understanding your opponent's recovery options and how they're playing. So far, I feel like Master Mario is just trying to come back to the stage where I start to set up the game plan that he normally likes to go for. One thing that he's been having the trouble with is going for grabs. That's kind of like one of the things I talk about people why like Mario is kind of still stuck in Smash 4, but it still works for him. It's just a different style of, it's just a different remix, for sure. And the one thing I want to see Master Mario is toss in the fireballs to get the grab, but the minute I say that the nuke, you need to get the jab into the forward air. Yeah, I think... Oh, great carry coming out from the nuke as well. I think in general, the UCLA scene is probably really, really strong. Oh, yes, and definitely. definitely I, don't, sure. I don't know if Sweet Tea still goes to UCLA. It's been a while since uh, I've last played him knowing that he was at UCLA, but the scene is very strong. They have players like Rafi, who makes it very far in the, at the at the MSN brackets, and it looks like they're doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, Rafi is UCI, but he does go to the locals every now and then. By the way, if you guys are wondering when UCLA locals are happening, they're happening this Friday. Fridays are usually reserved for bi-weekly collegiates, as well as the CSUN. They're having their locals as well, but let's get back to the game. All right, they able to go for the cape. I like the fact that he went for that option because he would have gotten the panic option. He was waiting for Nanook to go for a panic option. Because that's usually what tends to happen, right? You got a cave and you're scared, like, which direction am I going? Mm -hmm. Right. Which direction is Nanook going? Is if we're going off the stage. Yeah. Also, you're right. My bad. I forgot. Yeah. You, you, I got UCs mixed up. Yeah. But no, anyways. It's all good. Yeah, but here we go. <laughs> Let's think about living in SoCal, right? UCs everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Finally going to get that first big conversion with that up throw into the dare. Not able to follow up afterwards, though. Unfortunate. Putting him off stage one more time. The nuke still doing a good job of the edge trapping. Oh, Probably took a book off of uh, Mr. R's b Mr. R's page and just uh, doing a yeah, good job. Yeah, Mr. R played incredibly well at Ultimate Nimbus. Especially with that Marth. Kind of going back to how he was in Brawl a little bit. He was actually a Brawl Marth mate. Of course, different character altogether, but it is a Fire Emblem character nonetheless. Well, he makes it back off stage though, but the end. I think, in general, Krom, he has the range, but he also has decent frame data to be able to compete with Mario in both air-to-air -air and ground combat, exactly. which makes it very difficult for Mario in this scenario. He hasn't really been getting those opportunities to do like edge guards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. His double edge dance is a little bit stronger than Roy's. He can't kill earlier because just like the way Lucina works, his strength from the sword is within the sword, whole sword rather than within the sword. But tries to get that punish from the shield. I like the fact Master Mario doesn't want to play that out. He just goes back to the stage, resets himself to find a different situation because you don't want to be stuck in trying to trade forward smashes and get the wrong end of it. Yeah. I think maybe if he shield the eyed in. Maybe he would have been able to forget that force smash, yeah. but that's just theory crafting at that point. Another jab to fair. Man, like, this character with the right hands looks so good nowadays. Yeah, he's definitely one of the characters that I talk about. Like, we, even some of the higher players have talked about how he's kind of slept on, right? Like, we do have the classic, you know, top five best, best characters of the game that goes back and forth, right? But definitely Krom not too far from that as well. I like it. Master Mario uses that fireball to go ahead and get a, get a pick, try to get a grab here. But Anuk standing still, tries to go with that forward tilt. I like the option because sometimes Master Mario would have been landing with a fireball or a new chair. Okay. Alright, trying to come and hop. Oof. Yeah, try to find a tech chase situation. Very akin to how Roy's play is because the weaker hitbox leads to more tech chase situations, so you're able to find opportunities like that more often, and you go for like reverse force smashes and stuff like that. But, you know, Krom is still capable of doing that. One four tilt is basically death for Master Mario. You can tell he's playing really Ooh. carefully, but he just overextended them dirt a little bit, and you, the nuke is going to take game one. Yeah, you want to talk about options for Master Mario here there, and he started to play them a little bit slowly, but it was really difficult for him because he really was just pressing forward afterwards, right? I wanted to see him set up fireballs and then make a lead-in, right? That's what his option should have been. Set up a couple fireballs, then go in, but the problem was he went fireball and immediately went in. Renuk was already understanding, hey, all I have to do, like you said, hit him with this forward tilt, and then I'll get the kill. Master Mario has to come to me, yeah. no matter what. Okay, let's see how this next 
match goes down, I mean... It looked like, in general, Nanook was doing a good job with the control, but let's see if Master Mario kind of collected some info and see how he's able to get in the second time around. Oh, and already getting the jab reset and a zero to death. Very clean stuff from Master Mario. Great stuff to start things off here. It's a jab. I kind of like how Nanook immediately knew that Master Mario was going to go spot dodge, so he decided to go ahead and dash dance. So we get a different option here. Though it's the one thing Master Mario has kind of been... Having a simple trouble here is the landing option. That's where Nanook has been excelling, capturing Master Mario landings. But as I say that, he gets the platform base station at 85% damage here. Take him to the skies. Okay, this time, I think Master Mario, instead of trying to play aggressively, he's playing more passively. He's waiting in shield, waiting for Nanook to get something. Oh! Almost gets the flop with that slide in for the baseball. The Empire calls it safe, and he does. That's stuck. Yeah. I feel like, in general, it's just. You can see it, he's playing more passively, he's waiting in shield, he's waiting for Nanook to strike first. And then he's going for his out of shield options like rising up air, rising back air. Those lead to really big combos too. So he's giving up Mario's opportunities instead before Nanook was spacing away, making it difficult for Master Mario to come in. Now Master Mario is saying, okay, I'm gonna one I'm gonna be the one that keeps away. I'm gonna trade there and I'm also gonna take that three stock. Yeah. Comeback. Now Look this that, is where if he is listening to me via, I don't know, secret ERP is listening to the stream or something, it's the fro, he would, man. He would, the fro, the fro, he would, the fro has the earphones, <laughs> man. The fro has the earphones. He's listening yeah. to the commentary. He would, he would start going for tomahawks. He'd start going for empty hops instead mm -hmm. to try and pressure Master Mario into doing something different. And then while he's waiting in shield, makes him doubt about his out of shield options. That makes it much easier for that's, the nuke to get something going. That's the adaptation one you kind of want to see from the player, right? And that's what you want to understand. Like, he was so content with the first, for game one game plan. But that doesn't work in game two when Master Mario has readjusted himself, right? You always have to be on your toes. What's my game time the next game? Because he may not fall to the same things yeah. originally. So mm -hmm. let's go into game three. We'll see how uh, pretty much set point for both of these players. Let's see how it plays out. And immediately, I like the fact that he goes for that landing up air. And another one. Sorry, going for a jump up air instead of landing up air. Yeah. Nice this. jab into grab here, and immediately Master Mario feeling the fury from their nuke yet again. Yeah, I mean, that was all from one grab. He got a down throw into up air, and then he was able to extend that into a really big extension, get a lot of damage because of these triple platforms on town and city makes it difficult for him to land and get back onto the ground. I like the dash dancing from the nuke. And the one thing about the dash dancing that he's able to do is kind of move away and around from the fireballs. That's trying to sense how Master Mario's ability to approach, right? Look at that. Ca captures the fireball with the shield and immediately tries to push a little bit with that dash dance. Good whiff punish here coming out from the nuke, and he immediately trades him out there from the fireball to the back air. That'll work out for the nuke indeed. Oh, wow. I love that. The empty hop to bait out the roll and just able to get that grab. Puts him off stage one more time. Not going to get that opportunity to try and reset into an edge guard situation, but still pick him up with the falling up air. Not going to get that down air. It's the side B. And this is definitely in the matchup where Nanook is going to excel, especially when he doesn't have to approach and he forces Mario to try and come in with his landing aerials. Makes it so difficult. Oh, oh. no. A little bit of a fear factor. Yeah. I mean, at that situation, right, if Master Mario was able to call it the upbeat properly, it would have flooded him away. Yeah. But he had a charge, too. I think it was just a fear factor. And again, uh, I think he thought maybe since he was around the platform, maybe he thought he had his jump and then just kind of forgot that he didn't. Yeah. Much better opportunity, but again, another grab might set up for something. Not quite. Going to go ahead and go for the extension on the combo instead, but it doesn't quite happen. And again, the spacing, like I said, forcing Master Mario to approach is just so easy for oh. Krom to get a pivot forward tilt instead. Oh no, and he lands on the platform, but he faces the back air. Master Mario trying to recover from the death, and the Nook takes care of that option immediately. Master Mario strikes back with that invincibility. Yeah, as soon as he saw that he's drifting below the ledge, he's like, alright, you're going low, I'm gonna go and ferry you off before <laughs> things get too scary. Nice, leaves him with the fireball, and he almost gets that force smash, that would've been so crucial. But he gets the roll get up, and the Nook able to just power through that with the side B. Master Mario facing the fury here, he had adaptations here, but the Nook keeps getting these swift punishes. I feel that Master Mario is, too, is literally coming in with hot to handle. Yeah, I mean, we are at the hands of another of a big upset here. Actually, a player that first time I've seen them on stream versus Master Mario. This could be really big. Puts him off stage one more time. Tries to get the text chase. He had the right idea, but just oh, no. a little bit off on the execution. Did the empty hop instead of just the dash into the board. So probably cost a little bit of time to try and get that going. Oh, and the air dodge. Is he gonna make it back? No, the down air will take care of the stock. It's powerful knockback at the end of the last hit there. Able to take care of the nuke, but the nuke pretty much at the same situation you saw game one, right? All I gotta do is hit him with a couple forward tilts and might change it, but the minute he tries to go for it, Master Mario gets a grab. 
Oh man, I'm just thinking about how Krom, any moment he could lose his stock, especially already at 59%, but one forward tilt at the ledge is all he needs to try and bring this back around. One fair, off stage. What's Uses the up his double jump, gets the forward tilt, and he oh. gets it, and the nuke takes the stock, and he takes the stat. Great stuff. UCLA putting them on the map here at this tournament. That was pretty tough because at that situation, I kind of respect what Master Mario was trying to go for. He really wanted to go for the, uh, the directional air dodge onto the stage, so he gets the invincibility and gets pretty much what it's a wave land. But unfortunately there, he was too much angled towards the right, and he wasn't able to touch the stage, and the nuke able to take it over Master Mario. I respect the option there, but unfortunately it didn't play out as well for him. Yeah. UCLA man being put on the map. Yeah, that was crazy. I can't believe that happened. After a...